Approach to a patient with visual disturbance. Let's begin with our approach using P3 Maftosa, 3 P's, present complaint, past complaints, personal history. Let's start with present complaints. Do you mind if I ask you what has brought you into hospital? Here, usually the first thing comes out of patient mouth is chief complaint. What do you mean by visual disturbance? Is it visual loss, blurring of vision, diplopia, double vision, reduced colored vision, or positive symptoms such as scintillations, fortification spectra, floaters, and illusions? Let's ask further details using mnemonic sodpra. Onset. How did it start? What were you doing when it started? Is it the first time or there were previous episodes? Is the visual loss affecting one eye or both? Which part of the vision is affected? Top with path, bottom half, sides, or central? As monocular visual field defect is caused by ipsilateral optic nerve lesions anterior to the optic chiasm. Patient with bitemporal visual field loss complaining of colliding into peripheral objects on both sides. While, patient with homonymous hemianopia may have difficulty reading lines across a page. Is this the same in both eyes? At this point we have a clue whether is it a vision loss of acute or chronic onset, unilateral or bilateral, and extent of vision loss, duration, for how long it is present, most of the time it is written in the task, just check it with the patient, progression, has it been getting worse or has it been getting better, aggravating factor, have you noticed what makes it worse, relieving factor, have you tried to make it better, associated symptoms, ask, do you see double? Ask about color vision. Do you have trouble differentiating colors? Night vision. Do you have trouble seeing at night or in the dark? Do you have trouble in seeing the sides? Ask about any positive symptoms like fortification, scintillations, floaters and spectra like. Flashing lights and zigzag patterns are associated with migraine, retinal detachment, occipital lobe lesions. Do you see halos around the lights? Halos typically occur with acute glaucoma. Ask does the light hurt you? Do you have neurological sign? Any body weakness? Any numbness? Any tingling? Any balance problem? Any difficulty in coordination or any jerky movements of limbs? Did it start together? Any vomiting? Spinning sensations around zorconitis? If there is any pain associated with an eyes ask about pain questions using Socrates PDA, remember that. Deep, dull, retrobulbar pain, which is characteristically worse on moving the eye, is associated with optic neuritis, acute closed angle glaucoma, iritis, and thyroid ophthalmopathy are other causes of such pain, whereas gritty or burning type pain is caused by keratitis, conjunctivitis, blepharitis, corneal ulceration, and thyroid ophthalmopathy. Let's analyze the questions to make a possible diagnosis and rule out possible conditions that any cause double vision, depending on onset of acute or chronic vision change. We will proceed by establish our line of possible differentials. For acute onset visual disturbance, ask about local condition affecting eyes including acute closed angle glaucoma, central retinal artery vein occlusion, retinal detachment anterior uveitis, vitreous hemorrhage, and ophthalmitis. For the conditions involving nerves, ask about demyelinating optic neuritis, giant cell arteritis, optic neuropathy, labor's hereditary optic neuropathy, amaurosis fugax, stroke, migraine. For chronic onset visual disturbance, ask about open angle glaucoma, cataracts, retinitis pigmentosa, macular degeneration, diabetic or hypertensive retinopathy, optic nerve compression of any cause, and nutritional and toxic optic neuropathies. At this point we ask questions broadly to rule out possible differentials. Ask about color vision, do you have trouble differentiating colors, to rule out optic atrophy. Next, inquire about an important another feature of optic neuritis and multiple sclerosis. You may simply ask if visual loss improves gradually over a period of two to four weeks. Further ask, do you have trouble seeing at night or in the dark? 
night vision, to rule out retinitis as pigmentosa, for this young age in family history is a clue. Next ask about, do you have trouble in seeing the sides, as this might be a case of pituitary adenoma or multiple endocrine neoplasm, men 1. Also rule out any sign of malignancy by asking about any weight loss, night sweats, any lumps or bumps or any family history of particular medical condition. Check if any condition involving extraocular muscles by asking, have you noticed bulging or swelling of your eyes or any weight loss, as in thyrodoxicosis. Next, ask about weakness or soreness with difficulty raising arms above the head, difficulty rising from sitting and climbing stairs, as in myositis. Then ask, have you noticed the worsening of symptoms happen at a particular time of day especially at evening? Specifically ask about the pattern of limb weakness is it ascending or descending, as in myasthenia gravis, to check the integrity of neurovascular system. Ask about the causes that might cause the ischemic injury to nerves like diabetes or hypertension. Then, ask about the questions involving vessels as in giant cell arteritis by asking the age, any scalp tenderness and any pain in eyes. Another important differential is systemic lupus erythematosus. For this, simply ask about skin rash, joint pains, leg swelling and does the light hurts you and patient age and gender is also a clue. Further to rule out, infective causes that might cause the vision problem are being discussed now. Benign intracranial hypertension, simply ask about it by checking the weight, medications and gender of patient is usually obese, females taking oral contraceptives or vitamin A derivatives are possible clue to diagnosis. Next to rule out is, space occupying lesion, it usually associated with headache that worsen at morning hours or bending forward and also ask about any immunocompromised risk factor that might be the cause of toxoplasmosis or lymphoma. Furthermore ask about typical symptoms of Miller-Fisher syndrome, including acute ophthalmoplegia, areflexia, and ataxia in the setting of a preceding bacterial or viral illness. Moreover for botulism, specifically ask about the pattern of limb weakness is it ascending or descending and also ask about any recent illnesses of any use of canned food. 4. Amaurosis fugax. Ask as if you feel like curtain coming down in your field of vision in one eye which resolves completely within minutes to hours. However, papilloedema can present with unilateral or bilateral transient visual obscurations manifesting as transient loss of vision, lasting a few seconds with complete recovery between episodes. Typically symptoms due to raised intracranial pressure worsen by postural changes and straining. Then follow the standard approach to complete your interview with patient. Complete rest of aspects using P3 maftosa. Past complaints. Similar complaints. Has anything like this has been happened to you? For how long? What did you take for it? Is it well controlled? Are you taking any medication? Do you have any long time medical condition? If yes, then ask how long? Is it well controlled? Ask about hospitalization saying have you ever been hospitalized if says yes then ask what for for example for any procedure like endoscopy next step is personal complaints i'm going to ask you few personal questions and whatever you say will be confidential smoking do you smoke if say yes how many cigarettes do you smoke a day how many cigarettes are there in a pack for how long have you been smoking tell me about your sleep do you drink alcohol? If he says occasionally leave it. If says yes, proceed by asking what do you prefer to drink? How much? For how long have you been drinking like this? As alcohol consumption causes diamond, folate, and vitamin B12 deficiencies that all lead to nutritional optic neuropathies. How is your appetite? Recreational drugs. By any change do you take recreational drugs? If says yes. Then proceed by asking, sorry to ask you but what do you do, how do you take it, if injecting, ask, by any chance do you use new needle all the time, for how long are you doing this, do you use any other recreational drugs, weight loss gain, have you been waiting on the higher site, if yes, ask about bowel habits, how often do you open your bowels, 
Have you noticed any change, any alteration in bowel habit or bladder? Sexual history. Are you sexually active? If says no, then ask, have you ever been sexually active? If patient is sexually active, then ask, sorry to ask you this, but are you in a stable relationship? For how long? Do you practice safe sex? Do you use condoms? Are you on any contraception? What is your sexual orientation? Which route do you take? Did you travel abroad before your symptoms? Did you have any sex relationship there? I am sorry to ask you but by any chance, your partner has any sexual relationship? If patient is a woman, ask about 4P, period, LMP. When was your last periods? If more than 4 weeks then she might be pregnant. If she is not sexually active then she is not pregnant. How many days do they last? Are they irregular? Do you get pain? It can be of ovulation. Any bleeding between your periods or after intercourse? It can be due to ovulation, hormonal imbalance, cervical polyp, pelvic inflammatory disease, cervical erosion, contraceptive. Do you experience safe sex? Are you on pills? Pregnancy. If she is not sexually active so she is not pregnant, then ask, have you ever been pregnant? Duration of pregnancy? Mode of delivery? How many children do you have? Any miscarriage or abortion? Any complications before, during or after pregnancy? Pap smear. When did you have your last pap smear? What was the report? Was it normal? If it is abnormal, have you took appointment from GP? Medication. What kind of medication do you use? Are you on medication for any disease? Isoniazid, ethambutol, vincristine, cisplatin, cyclosporin, disulfiram, cydnophil, and amiodron, phenytoin, topiramate, and carbamazepine may be possible causes. Allergy, family history, for carcinoma history in family is important. Just ask, I am very sorry to ask but if anyone in your family diagnosed by sinister disease, cancer, family history of labor's hereditary optic neuropathy, other congenital optic neuropathies, and retinitis pigmentosa. Travel history, have you recently traveled abroad? Occupation history, what do you do for living? Social history, where do you live? Whom do you live with? And ask how much these symptoms are affecting your daily living? Do you drive? Anything else? Anything else you want to tell me? To the end take your time for impression. Then, turn to the examiner and say based upon my history, my most probable diagnosis is this. My differentials are this, this and that. And I should have ruled out this and that only if you have forgotten to rule out anything in your history. Thank you for watching. Stay connect and subscribe this channel for more interesting medical professional videos. And, good luck for your exam. Dot.